It's Wednesday. We're going to get back into this topic, iron deficiency anemia, and we're going to review it and we're going to have our five challenging NCLEX questions. This is our midweek pump up study session. I'm going to repeat iron deficiency anemia in case you guys missed it last week or the audio issues just to make it plain. And before I begin, hi everybody, before I begin, I am super excited about the opportunity to meet with you all in person at the live next generation NCLEX reviews. Yes, these are the free reviews that I will be bringing to these two cities, um, Los Angeles, California, and Hawaii. I will be there and I am going to be looking forward to equipping you. The, the reason why we're doing these next-gen NCLEX reviews is because we want to empower you and equ equip you to have an understanding of how you are going to pass this test. There is not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of real concrete ways to think about the questions that are out there. And Remar, as we endeavor to be the first to do many, many things in the future of nursing education, we are going to be bringing you this amazing opportunity to attend the class for free. So if you have not signed up for it, you can sign up by going to remarnurse.com forward slash live. And even if you don't see your city, if you don't see your city, what you're able to do is you are able to vote for the next city on where I will be coming, okay, on where I will be coming. So this is um, this is going to be for you, whether you can attend Los Angeles or Hawaii or not, the next city may be yours. So let's get into anemia. And here we already have been going down this path where we're looking at blood disorders and we are noticing the different cues. We are understanding the pathophysiology of the different types of blood disorders. And so with iron deficiency anemia, let's start by just going over what is anemia in general. What is anemia in general? So anemia, and if you're watching this while you're driving or you're working, I appreciate spending the time with you. Anemia is a hematology disorder characterized by low levels of red blood cells and hemoglobin in the body. And this is where the patient lacks enough healthy red blood cells to carry oxygen to the body's tissues. So there's a relationship between red blood cells and hemoglobin. Do you know it? Do you know the relationship between red blood cells and hemoglobin? And so here we have this issue where the body is not getting the proper amount of oxygen, okay? And there are, when we talk about anemia, there are many forms of anemia, but we're going to specifically look at the common type of iron deficiency anemia where the, the low levels of hemoglobin and red blood cells are caused by low levels of iron. So what is that relationship? Why do we care about this? Why is this important? Let's identify what is the role of red blood cells, hemoglobin, and iron in the body? So we're going to start with the, the red blood cells. So there are three types of blood cells. There are three types of blood cells. This is one of my favorite questions when I talk about hematology. What are the three types of blood cells? I'll give you one, red blood cells, okay? There are two more. What are they? The second type is going to be white blood cells. So you have red blood cells, you have white blood cells. And what else do you have? Is it another color? What is it? It is our platelets. Yes, our platelets. These are the three types of blood cells. So the red blood cells are the most common and they carry oxygen to different parts of the body. And they also, they're transporters in the sense that they 
um, remove carbon dioxide from the body at the same time. So imagine how much your oxygenation depends on red blood cells. Hemoglobin, though, is a type of protein that is found inside of a red blood cell. And hemoglobin specifically contains iron. So this hemoglobin is what is binding to the oxygen. It's the protein that's binding to the oxygen and also carrying out the carbon dioxide. And so hemoglobin um, helps the red blood cells, the RBCs, in transporting oxygen and carbon dioxide. Very important. Now, iron, what is iron? Iron is a mineral, okay? And the body needs iron to grow and develop properly. And iron, when we talk about hemoglobin being the protein that is, that is binding, iron is a major component of the hemoglobin, okay? And so you need iron in order to produce the hemoglobin protein. So when we talk about iron deficiency anemia, how does it how does it affect the body when you don't have enough iron? Well, for my visual learners, I I have here a flow chart where you can see when you have decreased iron levels, you are not going to be able to synthesize the protein hemoglobin. And so that means that your red blood cells are going to go down, they are going to be um, weaker, they're going to be uh, less, um, they're going to be less agile in carrying the oxygen or carrying the carbon dioxide away. And overall, you're going to have a decreased oxygenation. And that is the real issue with iron deficiency anemia. But I don't want to just say your patient has a decreased oxygenation without you understanding how that is possible. What is the issue? Okay. So our signs and symptoms of iron deficiency anemia, our patients clinically present with, and, and, and some of these things are very mild at first. And some, some of us have iron deficiency anemia and we don't even know it. We may not even notice that we have it until we get a blood test. Patients with iron deficiency anemia, they generally are tired. They have weakness. Their skin is pale. They have shortness of breath. An irregular or fast heartbeat. We're talking about symptoms of iron deficiency anemia. They also have headaches, dizziness, Mm -hmm. Leg cramps. This is so interesting to me, the, the poor appetite, the weird food cravings. When you don't have enough iron in your body, your body will start to crave non-food substances. So ice is huge. Whenever you see um, a, a patient, a woman eating ice, crunching down on ice, they have some anemia going on. Yep. Do you guys know when, when, when I was pregnant, I loved ice. I would eat it by the cupfuls first thing in the morning. Mm, get me a cup of ice. But when you think about it, there is no nutritional value in ice. None at all. You don't get anything from it. Right. And so when you crave a substance like I when you crave a substance like ice, it usually indicates that you're missing something in your nutrition. Now, I know other people that when they when they got i think it's called pika when they got this where they're craving non-food substances they would crave like i said starch they would crave paper paper products like paper towels toilet tissue people eat that chew on that um cardboard i know you guys know some other things that are non-food substances that people crave like they they eat it and they're lacking something in their nutrition so also um cold intolerance inflamed tongue 
brittle nails or hair loss. These are the signs and symptoms of iron deficiency anemia. Okay. And why would a person have iron deficiency anemia? What are the risk factors? What are the reasons? So the first one is inadequate iron intake. If consuming too little iron in the diet, over time, you're going to be iron deficient. Inability to absorb iron. So there are certain conditions that you have in your intestines that prohibit you from absorbing the iron that you're eating, okay, Um, or that your body is trying to help you deposit. So celiac disease, intestinal surgeries, you guys think about these things because we're going to have our review questions at the end. Blood loss also um, is a common cause of iron deficiency anemia, especially if you have a a heavy menstruation cycle. Also, if you have gastrointestinal bleeding of any kind or peptic ulcers. Okay. Okay. And then, of course, we mentioned this before, pregnancy. Pregnancy will cause your body to need to create more hemoglobin. And so if your body is not in a position to create more hemoglobin, then you're going to become iron deficiency and it may may, um, cause complications for yourself or the growing fetus. So how do we treat this? What is the treatment? Well, it's pretty simple. We are going to use, hey, everyone, we are studying uh, iron deficiency anemia tonight. Yeah, we're, let's talk about it. So the treatments are going to be iron supplements. And these, the doctor may prescribe these over-the-counter iron tablets. They may also come in a liquid form to younger clients. Yeah. So iron. So I make sure you guys understand the the teachings and the considerations for nursing if you are giving a patient iron. Also, the iron deficient diet is going to be iron rich foods and our iron rich foods are there. Red meat, dark greasy lean vegetables, dried fruit, nuts, iron and rich pastas. You also have um, grains, rice and cereals. And if the iron deficiency anemia is caused by bleeding, such as um, we we mentioned before, whether it's GI bleeding or whatever have you, we need to find the cause of that bleeding and treat that. So if it's from a heavy menstruation, we're going to do hormonal pills. There would be surgery for gastrointestinal bleeding, uh, intravenous IV supplementation or oral as well. These will these are going to be reasons why our patient could be suffering from, um, well, these are going to be reasons why we need to find out if our patient has iron deficiency anemia. Okay, here comes the nursing considerations at you. And these are just things that you need to be able to teach your patient. Very important to improve iron absorption. The nurse may instruct, okay, the client to number one, take iron supplements on an empty stomach. Okay. Iron may cause an unset, upset stomach, constipation, and black stools. The client may take it with meals, but if well tolerated, it is best taken absorbed on an empty stomach. Two, don't take with antacids. So antacids are going to block the iron that is absorbed. So you need to take iron two hours before or four hours after taking an antacid. Hope that makes sense to you guys. And just to note, when we're talking about our patients taking iron, it is important that they understand the side effects because we never want our patients to stop taking medication because the side effects, because sometimes the side effects may appear worse than the disease, but in this case is not. So the side effects of your patient having an upset stomach or being really constipated are less severe than the patient not having the oxygen that they need in their body or not producing enough 
um, hemoglobin. So we tell our patients, you may have this issue, but it's still important that you take your medication. That's great nursing right there. So when we're talking about taking vitamin C and iron and, and taking it together, there are certain meals and foods that work well with each other when you're trying to increase your iron absorption. So meats that are um, high in iron are going to be lamb, pork, should be chicken, and beef. So if you like those things, they are all high in iron. People who eat traditionally a lot of beans know that they have iron in them. Pumpkin, pumpkin, and squash seeds. And let me just say something about pumpkin because fall is coming up. And I know that you guys are seeing the pumpkin stuff everywhere for this fall and for this holiday season. I told Mark, I'm already committed to being team pumpkin pie. Like I'm with the pumpkin pie over sweet potato pie this year. I'm sorry, guys. So it's pumpkin pie for me all the way. I know you love it. I know. Don't act like you don't like pumpkin pie. I know that you love it. And if you don't love it, it's probably because you never had it. That's my thing. Argue with me, but no, it's pumpkin pie this year. All right. Um, leafy greens, spinach, raisins, and other dried fruits. Eggs are high in iron. Seafood like clams, sardines, and shrimps, and oysters. Yep. Foods that are high in vitamin C are going to be the fruits like oranges, grapefruits, strawberries, mm -hmm. kiwis, guava, papaya. I don't know. You guys have papaya growing where you are? Pineapples, melon, and mangoes. Mango. Shout out to Jamaica. The best mangoes I ever tasted were in Jamaica. I love them. Broccoli. Foods that are high in vitamin C. Broccoli. That um, should be red. Sorry. Red and green bell peppers cauliflower, tomatoes, and also leafy greens are high in vitamin C. So now that we went over the content, you guys know I do content first and then questions. I don't, that's the way that you study. So this is our first question. The client reports that she has stopped taking her iron tablets since she kept getting constipated. What would be the best response by the nurse? Number one, take iron supplements on an empty stomach for better absorption. Two, you may take your iron tablets with meals. Three, drink plenty of fluids when taking iron tablets. Or four, you may stop taking your iron supplements for now. Here we go, guys. What is going to be the best response by the nurse? Now, listen, the patient is reporting what? What's going on with the patient? I'm telling you, the patient is there and they're saying they're constipated. All right. So I see the answers on the screen. You guys are doing pretty good. Um, the correct answer is going to be... Three, drink plenty of fluids when taking iron tablets, okay? And this is because we already know that iron supplements can cause constipation. That is nothing new. And so we need to tell our patients to combat the constipation, then we need to drink plenty of fluids. And a stool softener can also be added if it's needed. Question number two. Who is at most risk of developing iron deficiency anemia? Number one, 29 year old Prima Gravita prescribed with iron tablets. Two, 25 year old with a menstruation period of two to three days. Three, 50 year old with hemoglobin level of 14. Four, a 44 year old client under chemotherapy due to gastrointestinal tumors. Hey, what say if you guys, what do you think it is? Who is most at risk? Who has the risk factors for iron deficiency anemia? 
great job, everybody. Great job. You guys are showing up and you are showing out with this question. All right. So let us reveal the right answer now that uh, votes have been in. People are saying, I'm commenting, I'm coming. Wait, wait, wait. Correct answer is number four. 44 year old client under chemotherapy due to gastrointestinal tumors because the iron deficiency anemia can be a result of issues with the GI tract where the absorption that takes place in the intestines is just not happening. It's just not happening. And if a patient has gastrointestinal tumors, there probably is going to be some um, iron and blood loss in the place where the tumors are. All right. Question number three, I love it, is this, the nurse is educating an outpatient client prescribed with daily iron supplements. Which should the nurse advise to the client? Number one, iron makes the urine turn red-orange. Two, you may experience black stools when taking iron. Three, this may make you feel sleepy, so it's better to take this at night. Four, this supplement will boost your energy. Okay, come on in. We're talking about iron. And these are the important points that you need to be able to tell your patient. These are the important points. Um, and these are the things that, again, will prohibit a patient from taking the iron that they really need. So the correct answer here is number two. You may experience black stools when taking iron and it's simply just because this is going to be um, this is going to be an issue for the patient. Because when the iron breaks down, when the iron um, allows for proper absorption to happen, then the stools turn a different color. And so this is a common, common, common um, experience for clients taking iron supplementation. Let's get back into it. Question number four, the client asks, why do I always feel tired with anemia? Why is this happening? Why do I always feel tired? The choices are to be the correct response from the nurse is number one, low blood pressure due to anemia causes you to feel tired. Two, your body does not receive enough, enough oxygen due to low hemoglobin. Three, you do not have enough blood that circulates in your body. Or four, feeling tired is a normal side effect of your medications. Ah, mm -hmm. patient says, I always feel tired with anemia. Correct answer is pow. Two, your body does not receive enough oxygen due to low hemoglobin. Mm -hmm. So hemoglobin in red blood cells, again, we talked about this. It is responsible for transporting oxygen to different parts of the body. And so low levels of hemoglobin results to low levels of oxygen being delivered to the body. It's really that simple. Question number five, we're saying, the nurse is teaching the client on iron rich foods and foods rich in vitamin C. Which of the following selections by the client indicate that teaching was correctly understood? Okay. The client says they're going to have, is it beef and broccoli and fresh orange juice? Is it an egg sandwich and black coffee? Is it grilled cheese and apple juice? Or is it pancakes and strawberry yogurt? Hmm. Which of these indicate that, you know, the patient understands iron rich foods and foods high in vitamin C, which selection, not the selection that probably tastes the best, but which one is appropriate for the patient right now. And that is going to be 
Hey, <laughs> number one, I don't know, this combination is kind of strange, but beef and broccoli and fresh orange juice. If you are looking for a meal high in vitamin C with iron rich foods, this is going to be it. So good job, everyone. Today, I am proud of you. You showed up today winning Wednesday. This is how we get over the hump. And at least we can say that we've done some studying today because that is the goal that we made it easy, we came together, we did some content, we did some questions, and we are preparing for our new, new opportunity, which is taking NCLEX. Hey, speaking of new opportunities, I have one. It is my free NCLEX review for Next Generation NCLEX. I'm gonna focus on that. Um, and also principles of our current way of passing the NCLEX exam. And so I will be in Los Angeles, California, September 12th. And on September 19th, I'm going to Hawaii to do a review. Uh, let me just give you the locations. And listen, Los Angeles um, is already waitlisted, but it's very important for those of you who are even getting on the waitlist to make sure that you're actually going to come and be there. We don't want anyone who wants to be there and is in the city to actually sign them because I have people signing up from far away, like not even in California. So please make sure you're just signing up if you are coming to the LA class. Um, and so that will be September 12th. Educators and students are welcome to attend this class. I have no, I want educators there because at the end of the day, um, I, and I am at a position where I need to help educators to help the nursing students so that we can all work together. And um, so that is my goal. And remember, if you come to the LA class, or even if you come to the Hawaii class, um, the first 100 students will be getting a Remar Nurse Next Gen Study Kit. Uh, and that will be totally for free. And we'll actually use some of the things during class for Next Generation NCLEX. So it encourages you to be on time because once my study kits run out, I will not have any anymore. So Come to class, come on time if you're attending LA. Come on time too if you are attending the um, class at the Hawaii specific university. And we have about 250 slots available for there. I know we're getting close to that number too. So first hundred, get the study kit. Everybody else, I will see you with the review. You'll, you will get the workbooks. I'm doing a whole new workbook. Like it's a vibe. It's a vibe, this next gen NCLEX. And I want you guys, when you leave my class, to feel like I know some things about this test that I only could have learned at Remar. And that's the goal. So I will see you guys next week. I am looking forward to meeting you in person and seeing you guys and helping you understand how you need to move in order to be successful in your NCLEX exam. If you want to know where else I'm coming to or vote for your city, please go to remarnurse.com forward slash live, L-I-V-E, to sign up and vote for your city. And do me a favor. You can also text the word NCLEX to me directly at 855-696-0135. Again, that's 855-696-0132. Well, it was a pleasure studying with you guys this Wednesday. Thank you so much for checking out this class. We do this here every Wednesday at Remar. And if nobody else told you this, you can, you will, and you must pass NCLEX. Text me later, guys. I'll see you. Bye-bye.